When my oldest turned into a teenager, I braced myself for the inevitable wars over music. They never happened. In fact, he embraced my music, the music of the late 60s and 70s. And over the years, we've had some absolutely marvelous conversations about various artists. We've shared new and different music that we've heard that reminds us or mimics some of the great hits. He's even introduced me to things that somehow I missed. One of those was the Grateful Dead. I missed that whole experience. How was that? Well, as I've learned in the years since his introduction to me, they never really did get much play on the radio, and their albums weren't what they were known for. Instead, it was live performance. You had to be there to experience the dead. It's why that whole phenomenon called the Deadheads was such a powerful movement in that band's history. Because you had to be there to experience it. Because a concert at Cornell University was different than a concert in San Francisco as was a performance in Madison Square Garden and hundreds of other venues over the years. Every night was a new opportunity to hear something you might never have heard before or never would ever again because of the venue, where the performers were, where the crowd was. You had to be there experience that music. You had to be there. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The opening lines of John's Gospel. You had to be there to experience that Word. When God became enfleshed on that holy night, in Christ Jesus. The word took on a new dynamic quality. No longer was it bound on scrolls tucked away in synagogues. No longer was it pressed between the covers of a book. It was a living word. A word of flesh and blood. It was a person. A dynamic encounter. And because of that, it was a word that could speak and encourage others to follow. Because the word at Capernaum was different than the word in Bethlehem and different in Jude, Jerusalem. And the region of Judea and Galilee was a different word yet. It's no wonder that Jesus had followers. Maybe they were the, the life heads. Whatever. It was a movement that continued. It broke the bonds of being just an in-house Judaism to spread to non-Jews, to spread throughout the Roman world, that continued to spread as humanity embraced new and different cultures. It had a word, a way to be able to speak directly because it was a living word in places that one might never dream of it ever reaching. It is a word alive. And that is why it can speak to us today. Because it is not bound by a particular time or a particular interpretation. It continues to speak in the midst of our ever-changing world and our ever-changing lives. And yet there is a great danger these days of 
killing that word in flesh and binding it once again between the covers of a book to make of it static, never changing. We do that. We run a great danger of snuffing out the dynamic life of the Christian faith. A couple of things I've noted over the years is that when we do that kind of reading of Scripture, we tend to use Scripture to end conversations rather than to begin them, as was the Jewish tradition. Of opening conversations with scripture and inviting the interpreters of the years to speak alongside that word. Instead we go, well it says in the Bible this, that's the final word. The second piece is that we are bound by a particular question these days. What does this particular Bible reading mean? And we've spent much ink trying to explain the intricacies of this text or that text or what Mark might have meant or what was Paul really saying about women. Instead, I believe we have to ask a new question these days, and that is, what do we hear from this word? What's God saying through it? What's God revealing about God's self? Now, if Jesus is the word in flesh, that Jesus' whole ministry is to point our way to God, and that hasn't stopped. How is that word then pointing us to God? What's it revealing about God in our midst today? Where is God active? What's God calling us to do? What's God saying to me in this particular reading? Now, Luther reminds us that there is a danger in that, because we can make that word say whatever we want to. And that is where we have to trust in the Holy Spirit. In fact, all Bible reading should be done in the context of prayer to invoke the Spirit's discernment that we might be led to hear clearly what God is saying. It is that same Holy Spirit that calls us together in the life of the church to experience that body of Christ, that living word in its full dynamic, a word that we not only hear and read, but we sing and we pray and we splash and we eat and we drink of it. It is a word that calls us to encounter it. And to do that, you got to be there. Let that word speak fully, dynamically. The word became flesh and dwells among us still. You that have ears, listen. For God is speaking. But you got to be there. Word of God, come down on earth, living rain from heaven descending. Touch our hearts and bring to birth faith and hope and love unending. Word Almighty, we revere you. Word made flesh, we long to hear you.